Chris Sewell here, baseball card collector, investor, dealer in that order. Welcome everyone. Today I'm going to share something a little bit uh, personal. I'm not sure how many people will be interested in this, but I, I found it to be a blast. Uh, as most of you know, I've uh, been living in the Netherlands for the last four and a half years. I just moved back to the States a month ago and I've spent some time this summer at my parents' house, the house I grew up in. And I found an old box uh, in the attic with a bunch of uh, stuff from my childhood in it, which included a binder full of uh, baseball cards, which I had completely forgotten about went through it and had uh, just an amazing trip down memory lane. And you know, I'm gonna share it here and hope, hope you uh, all enjoy it as well. So as I mentioned, I had completely forgotten about these, but when I opened up the binder, I obviously remembered everything uh, immediately. One of my best friends growing up was named Aaron Berman and we uh, traded cards together, we collected cards together. We also made cards of ourselves and we designed a uh, fictional future where an expansion team was called the Richmond Lions came into the league in the late 90s and we were the stars of the team. I was the star hitter of the Richmond Lions. Aaron was the star pitcher of the Richmond Lions. And we would have been doing this in sort of like the early 90s is probably when we were making these cards. And I made a card of myself every single year from like 1999 through 2020. Most of them uh, top brands. That first one I was holding was my rookie year. I played with the Cubs and then I played the rest of my career with the Lions. Uh, that's like a, a MVP card. That's like a, a gold glovers, gold glove winners card. I'm not sure, but you can see four four players on there. Here's just one of my uh, standard base cards. I think this is my 2001 tops uh, base card. You can see I'm uh, hitting a nice in action hitting shot there. I'm probably hitting a home run. Shortstop for the Lions. Of course, I was a shortstop as I was uh, following my boy Cal. I'm, I'm sure I wore uh, number eight as well. And uh, yeah, we made these cards, and I completely forgot about them, but. Uh, very cool to go back over them and, 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 and sort of remember everything. Uh, this is my minor league card. I played for the Spokane Hawks, apparently. But yeah, I even have my minor league card here. And it talks about how I'm a future prospect of, uh, in the major leagues. So the way I remember it is we, Aaron and I would get together every Monday after school. Uh, that was the way our parents set it up. And we might trade cards first, and then we would each make a card of ourselves. And then we would go play uh, baseball, sort of a one-on-one -on -one not one on one, like more more like in a tandem, and like tell the story of a Richmond Lions game in the future that we were playing. So like he would pitch to me, and I would hit it, and we would. It wasn't a competition. It was more like, you know, he's pitching to Chris Sewell. Chris Sewell just hit a home run, and we would sort of tell the story of a game as we played. Uh, and then you know, over time, we had done this so many times. I got this huge collection of <laughs> of Chris Sewell <laughs> uh, tops cards. You know, here's a. 69 game hitting streak I apparently had in uh, the mid 2000s that would uh, destroy the Joe DiMaggio record and obviously I was the the greatest hitter of all time and Aaron was the greatest pitcher of all time I and mean, if you're going to design a fantasy where you uh, play in the major leagues in your in the future you might as well make yourself the greatest of all time here's a card you can see I was indeed wearing number eight uh, shortstop number eight uh, it's the only thing that would make sense given that Cal Ripken was my favorite player growing up so emulated as much as I could about him and we actually made stats for ourselves of every single year. And we, we kept, you know, we created stats. I, again, I was obviously the best player in baseball, and Aaron was the best pitcher in baseball for our 20 year careers. But we had stats every single year wins, losses for him, you know, home runs, RBIs for me, batting average, et cetera. And we also did that with the Richmond Lions, like their wins and loss record. And they were obviously the best play, best team in baseball for the 20 year stretch that Aaron and I played for them. Uh, and I think we won like 10 World Series. Here's a cool, like, vertical action shot with my stats on the back. This is my. 2013 tops base card tough card to find nowadays a uh, really low pop count on that i might send that to psa i uh, forgot to mention the the league in our fictional world got split into three there's now the american league the national league and the united league uh and uh, so there were three mvps each year I, like i said i won seven mvps throughout my career here's just one of them where i share my uh, mvp winners card with two other players and uh, i can see i sort of at some point you know didn't finish all the project here but uh, some some of the photos still missing, but I did get elected to the Hall of Fame in 2025. That means my career ended in 2020. Here's my Hall of Fame induction card, and uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I had, like I said, I had, I had quite the career. Some of the highlights listed on the back include 758 career home runs. That's an all-time record. 602 career stolen bases, making me the only 600-600 player in history. Uh, 4,355 hits. That's number one all time. Just a 324 career, bat, bat, career batting average. Felt like that should have been higher. But seven MVPs, 18 time Gold Glove winner, uh, fifth all time in runs scored, and lots of other great accomplishments by uh, yours truly. And this next card is sort of a, a cool concept. This was the uh, 700 Home Run Club card. There were only five members at the end of my career. Hank Aaron and Babe Ruth had already gotten there. Uh, there's me in the middle 
with 758, number one all time. But I also put that Frank Thomas and Mark McGuire eventually reached 700 home runs. This was, again, in the early 90s. We were making this Thomas and McGuire both early in their careers. Uh, neither of them actually did get 700, but they both reached 500, so it wasn't a, uh, a crazy prediction, we'll say. So in the early 90s, there were, of course, a lot of brands popping up, and Aaron and I both always wanted to be the one who designed the card, you know, and we had, like, mini fights over it. Like, who gets to design the look of the 2016 Topps card? And so when we finished the Topps run, we decided to uh, each take a separate brand so that we could always design our own card. I, I decided to go with Leaf. I really liked more elaborate backs. As you can see, I've sort of made some elaborate backs on the Leaf card. So I did I did a whole bunch of Leaf uh, cards, and Aaron did another brand. I don't, I don't remember which one he did, but, yeah, you know, you kind of started getting a little more creative here with the look of the card. Look at this nice uh, three images on on one uh, on the front of this card here, and yeah, clearly getting more elaborate with the backs. I think we, you know, got more creative and better at it as we uh, as we went along, of course. And then I also invented a brand called Score Flyers. Score was obviously a, a major brand at the time, and yeah, Score Flyers was a, a sub brand I invented from them. And um, yeah, here's a card of me winning one of my seven MVPs. Not sure if I've mentioned that. I did win seven MVPs. That's an all time record. Although actually, Barry Bonds won seven MVPs, but. This uh, futuristic fantasy was designed before Barry Bonds uh, won all his MVPs. This card was clearly inspired by 1991 Pinnacle. If you're familiar with that set, it came out in um, football and hockey, and that looked a lot like it. And this card here I'm holding was clearly inspired by 92 Ultra, a very sort of similar design on the front. And this was the only card I ever made in color, apparently. I don't know if that was like a future project to start making the cards in color, but of all the cards here, there was only one that actually did in color. And this last page here, these actually aren't of me. These are of our teammates, some of our teammates for all those World Series winning Richmond Lions teams. Uh, Chad Davis, he was a good friend of mine. John Puebla was a pitcher. Uh, Gene Michael was our catcher. Uh, Mark O'Neill and uh, Ron Yoper was our closer, apparently. I don't really remember most of these names. Chad Davis I remember because he was a friend, but the other names just seem uh, completely made up. Here's a cool insert card I was making, King of the Jungle. And that was going to be a, an insert card of me as... I was the king of the jungle since I played for the uh, the Lions there. Very, very clever. But yeah, that's my Richmond Lions collection. And it's, it's really a Chris Sewell collection. I mean, maybe the best Chris Sewell collection I've ever come across in my hobby dealing career. Complete tops run, you know, some early uh, Leaf cards, some early Score Flyers cards, a couple of inserts at the back, really impressive uh, collection. This card here is the only card I have that features Aaron, my, my friend. Uh, it's a triple threats from the Richmond Lions. It has me, Aaron, and a teammate of ours nicknamed Little Guy. I don't remember the details there, but yeah, Aaron's in the upper left. Again, he's a pitcher, and the, the, this particular season he went 21-10 and 10 with a 2.09 ERA. That was probably a pretty standard season for him. I'm sure he set every pitching record there is in the same way that I set basically every hitting record that there is. And, you know, I haven't spoken to Aaron in probably 20, 25 years at this point, but uh, feeling the urge to reach out via, you know, try to find him on Facebook or something and uh, maybe send him this video and, and see if he, see what he remembers about it. But hope everyone enjoyed this, you know, even a fraction as much as I did as this was a, uh, a fun one for me. Thanks everyone.